internet people and welcome to vlogtober where i'm challenging myself to sew for one hour every day and bringing you along for the journey today's episode is going to be for vlogtober day 14 15 16 17 and 18. it's kind of been a whirlwind for the last five days and so i just have bits and pieces from every day filmed and so i thought i'd just mash them all together into one video and that will be that I've been working on my peppermint peplum top for my Halloween top. It's going to be out of this fabric here from Hawthorne Supply Company. And I've been working on the fit and I've made two muslins so far. It's averaged out to about an hour a day. So I'm still on track for sewing about an hour a day, but I haven't filmed everything just because I don't want to bore you too much. And I've had a lot of other stuff going on. On Thursday, I had my eyes dilated. And if you've ever had that done, you know that there was no way of working on very much sewing that day. So I did a little bit before I left for my appointment. And then, you know, after I didn't do anything. Friday, my sister came over to celebrate her birthday. So I was busy hanging out with my sister. And then this weekend, I worked on altering the pattern and making the second muslin. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this video. So this is the first muslin of the peppermint peplum top. I made a size G, which is for a 43 inch bust. My bust is measuring 42. So the first thing that I'm noticing is the length. I do think it might be a little short for me. The second thing that I notice is I feel like the back is a little bit too narrow. So I need to figure out what to do about that. There could also probably be something done to the shoulders. It does seem to tent out a little bit, but I think that that might be fixed with the length and maybe some sort of back and shoulder adjustment. And if those don't work, then I might need some sort of bust adjustment. Now, the other thing is I did do the bindings on the neckline and the armhole, and that is causing all kinds of extra lines that don't need to be there. I did want to sew it this first time because I wasn't sure what it would be like, but next time I definitely won't be doing that. So I'm going to marinate on that and think about it a little bit and see what alterations I come up with for the second version. Hello internet people and welcome to Vlogtober day 16. Happy Saturday. Today is Saturday and today we are going to be working on the fit for this peppermint magazine peplum top for my Halloween top and it's already October 16th so we better get going otherwise I'm going to finish it after Halloween and that's no good. So today we're going to work on some pattern alterations and here's my disclaimer. I am by no means a pattern alterations expert. I barely know what I'm doing. I'm fumbling along. I'm bringing you along for the fumbling and just trying to figure it out, figure out my body in relationship to sewing patterns as I go. And so, yeah. So if you're here for some expert pattern alteration instruction, this is not the place. This is the place to maybe learn along with me, maybe pick up something uh, through the video. But anyways, so that's my rambly disclaimer. So we're back in our peppermint peplum top today and I've looked at it in the mirror and stared at it and thought about it and Googled it uh, for this morning. And I've come up with a few things that I've decided to work on for this second round muslin. So number one alteration is gonna be on like the basic size. So I chose to make a size G for this first muslin. That's for a bust 43 and a waist 37. Yeah, 37. And that's me and that was me sizing up because I'm actually a 42 inch bust, which falls in between F and G on their size chart. F is for a bust 42, G is for a bust 43. So I'm like kind of in between those two sizes. And then I'm definitely in a size F for the waist. So I need to blend between sizes. I need to blend between the F and G for the bust and then go down to an F for the waist. So I think that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Second thing is lengthen it. And I'm not entirely sure how much, maybe, I don't know, like three inches to be determined. I'm gonna lengthen it to be determined. Number three, I need to do something with the shoulder and the back. Um, I, probably, I probably need a forward shoulder adjustment. I probably need a broad back adjustment. I might need a full bust adjustment, but I'm gonna leave that aside and figure out the back first and then reassess the front. And for the second time around, I'm not gonna do the bindings on the neckline 
or the armhole. I wanted to just see what that was like for the first one, but as you can see, it's like causing all kinds of lines here just because I sewed it really poorly. And we don't need that when we're trying to assess, assess fit. So we're gonna skip that part for the next one. So I think that that's enough for a second muslin. I'm not really sure that you should be changing more than like three things when you're like still experimenting with how to do alterations just because it starts to get complicated. So we're gonna leave it to those three things, sew it up, see how it fits, then reassess the situation. Hopefully, hopefully that will fix it because I don't wanna to have to do it again. I wanna get this sewn up so I can wear it before Halloween. First step is done. So I have two sizes printed out on my pattern. I have both the F and the G. So I just drew a diagonal line between the two sizes at the side seam. And I'm going to call that good. I was gonna grade in between the armhole as well, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and see how that works. The next thing is I'm going to lengthen it. Okay, so I ended up doing pretty much major surgery on my pattern pieces. This is the original back piece and this is my new back piece and I lengthened it by four inches. I blended between the G and the F at the side seam, and I did a half an inch uh, um, broad back adjustment. And then I got a little bit crazy and I eliminated the shoulder yoke, or at least that's what I think the piece is called, but there's basically this piece here that goes over the shoulder and it attaches a little bit in front of the shoulder and a little bit behind the shoulder. And so what I did was I cut it in half where I thought that the shoulder point probably was. And then I attached the back piece to the back side and then the front piece to the front side. And I added the seam allowance and then I also did a forward shoulder adjustment. So I added a half inch to the back and I took out a, uh, I took out a half an inch from the front. So this is the front piece. So you can imagine this shoulder piece here, um, cut in half, half an inch added, seam allowance added, and then this, this is the front piece. So it goes this way and I attached that, took out the half inch that I added from the back, added the seam allowance, and now I will be joining them together. What I hope is a shoulder seam that actually falls at the proper shoulder point on my shoulder. That is the pattern transformation. It's kind of an experiment at this point, but I really want to learn how to fit my patterns better. So I thought, you know what, let's just do it. Let's try it. It's an experiment. We'll see how it works out. And so now I'm just going to cut it out of my fabric, muslin fabric, my bed sheets, my old bed sheets. I'm going to cut it out of my old bed sheets, sew it up really quickly, and I'll show you how it looks. Hello internet people and welcome to Vlogtober day 18. So we've been working on the peppermint peplum top for my Halloween top and it's going to be out of this fabric, but we're currently on our second muslin. So on Saturday, I told you all about all the alterations I was going to make for the second version. And on Sunday, I sewed it up real quick. I just basted everything together and uh, notched and folded in the arm. What is my fridge doing? Can you hear that? My fridge sounds like it's about to take off. <laughs> um, I just notched and folded in the neckline and the armholes, the arm, the sleeve, whatever, this part. I notched and folded it in. So let me give you a look at how all the alterations I made changed the fit of the top. Let me refresh your memory on everything I did. I lengthened it by four inches. I did a half an inch broad back adjustment. I did a half an inch forward shoulder adjustment and I eliminated the yoke here. Um, so now there's just one shoulder seam. So, so here is the fit. Let me give you a good look at it. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> so there it is. The main thing about it is somehow it managed to get very big um, at the side seams and the un underarm. And the only thing that I can think of as to why 
Well, I'm not gonna pretend like I have any real knowledge. We're just grasping at straws here, learning as we go. The only thing I can think of is that when I added the half inch broad back adjustment, which actually is about an inch total because it's, an, it's a half inch on both sides. The only thing I can think of is that basically I increased the circumference of the entire garment by about an inch. And so maybe I need to actually take away a half an inch on both side seams from the front piece. That's like the only thing I can think of. But when I was Googling broad back adjustment, it didn't say anywhere that you needed to adjust the front piece um, to accommodate for the fact that you increased the back and actually it doesn't really make sense because the broad back adjustment means that you needed more fabric to cover the width of your back I don't know why I ended up like that but I think what I'm gonna do is just take in the side seams maybe a half an inch maybe more and then I think if I take in the side seams it should be okay well I hope it'll be okay so if I kind of take it in a little bit uh it might work and i think if that looks okay i'm not going to do any other alterations we're not going for perfection we're just going for something that's an improvement over the original version <laughs> i'm pretty happy with the shoulder adjustment you have to kind of pretend like these are all tucked in but um i'm pretty happy with the shoulder situation it seems to be falling pretty in line with where my shoulder bones are. So I'm happy about that. Another thing that I'm seeing is a couple drag lines around the shoulder area here and here, if you can see that. So maybe the forward shoulder adjustment didn't work quite how I wanted it to, or maybe I need a square shoulder adjustment as well. But I'm gonna do the side seams first and see how that goes and then will reassess. And obviously you can also see all of these lines around here, but I think because it's just like a blousey top, maybe this kind of, these kinds of lines are okay. Yeah. Once again, not sure. Just pointing out what I'm noticing here. So I'm noticing these lines here. I'm noticing this here. I'm noticing this width here. And actually this gaping here at the back of the armhole, is another thing, um, but that might get fixed when I take in the side seams. So those are the things I'm noticing. I do think the back fits better. I'm not sure, maybe the broad back adjustment wasn't the right thing to do because it caused, there's just so much more space here, but let's take in the side seams and then reassess. Okay, I took it in one inch on both side seams and I think that was a little bit too much. <laughs> but let me give you a look at it. Yeah, it was definitely too much because I managed to make the back tight again. And you can see, yeah. So we still have this gaping in the back of the sleeve or the armhole. Um, and maybe a little bit of gaping here. Maybe that's, I don't know what that's from. Honestly, you guys, I just don't even know. I don't even know. It's kind of only when I stand a certain way. So I think I'm going to call it there in terms of pattern alterations. I think I'm going to maybe do a half an inch in on the side seams instead of this inch. And then I can always adjust it from there when I make the actual garment. Like I said, I'm not going for perfection here. I don't have the patience, knowledge, understanding, etc., to like work on this forever. And so I want to just make it better. And I think by lengthening it, altering the shoulders, adding some to the back. I think it's definitely better. If you have any comments about it, let me know. I probably won't cut it out until after this video goes up. So if there's like something really major that you see that I should know about before continuing on, please let me know. Um, the other thing is that this is a Halloween top and it's pretty cold here in October. And so I don't see too many 
too many operations, too many situations in, in which I'm wearing this top without like a cardigan over it. It's just not warm enough. So um, the fit doesn't need to be perfect uh, through this armhole. And I know it's a little bit of a cop out, but like I said, I'm not going for perfection. Someday I'll be able to perfect my fit, but that day is not today. So I'm gonna call it on the alteration situation. So I hope you enjoyed this pattern fitting muslin journey episode and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys for the next one.